Hey folks, welcome back. This is Jay from Jay Talk. And of course, we have our wonderful co-host, the ever talented skiing Nick from the Nick Drop. Where do you come up with these things? They're super, they're, that's funny. Where well, do you? I mean, I this just is like on the fly. Off the cuff. It's an off the cuff thing. Yes, it's completely off the cuff thing. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Yeah. How you doing, man? Man, it was a good day. That's I good. Got some stuff done. Got some stuff done. That's good. Took, took care of some responsibilities, made the boss happy, you know, ran some errands, got Wait, you you're know. not married. What boss are you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. I'm just teasing, folks. Come on. <clears throat> anyway, so you made the boss happy, you took care of some stuff. Boss happy. Took care of business. Yeah, it was a good day. <laughs> Good for you. Good. How about you? Nah. It was um, a boring day until this afternoon. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I went and had dinner with my kids, um, nice. my ex-wife, and, you know, of course, my daughter and granddaughter were there. So, And I don't get to see them, but once a year. Nice. Well, it's nice that you got a chance to see him now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, of course, Lorelai is my granddaughter's name, and so, you know, she, yeah. I walked up to her, stuck my hands out, and she immediately come to me. Grandpa! It, what did she call you? She called you Grandpa? No, she didn't. She can't speak yet, so. Oh. Yeah, but, you know, the name I, I want her to call me, nobody else wants her to call me, so they're all. Um, Why? That's your prerogative. I know. I know, but they don't like it. So what is it? You got to tell us now. G daddy. G daddy. <laughs> <laughs> you sagging your pants too while you're at that? No, G-daddy? no, I'm good. That's it. I'm gonna start calling you G daddy now. <laughs> there you go. Okay. okay. G daddy. <laughs> hey, this is G daddy from J Talk. Anyway, <laughs> hey, there you go. You need to do it. <laughs> Anyway, no, it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, but it, Jay Junior is like there. There's no way, Dad. We're not calling you that. It ain't happening. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I think it's great too. Of course, you know. I the, think I did say on the podcast of what I wanted my kid, my grandkids to call me. What did you want? Do you remember? No. Nugget. Oh yeah, that's right. I do remember that. Okay. I heard a grandpa get called that, and I thought that's it. That's the best. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty funny. I like that one. Okay. That's a pretty good one. <laughs> so, gee, daddy. So I got to work. On, I got to work on Nikki and Andrew when they have their kids. Yeah. But no, oh. so, you know, Andrew used to call me the real OG all the time. So why not go with the G daddy? You know, so it stands for grandfather or granddaddy. Well, he does. I think it's good. <laughs> so yeah, I know there's going to be some people out there that are like, really. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Really. Yep. Yeah. Really. Yep. Exactly. Don't okay. Don't be jealous. Okay. Don't be hating. <laughs> so I, I think I've, a, I've officially heard the worst dad joke today. Really? Yes. You ready for this? Yes. Okay. You know how humans have different blood types? Yes. Does that mean mosquitoes look at us as flavors? <laughs> or maybe I should have done this one. Yeah, that's probably more accurate. One. <laughs> okay, that was bad. That was bad. See, I told that you was that was. I was like, I was like, really? Did you just? Really? I, I couldn't, well, yeah, I was, I told Junior that one, and he was just like, no, Dad, really? And I'm like, you know, it was so bad, I had to share it. <laughs> okay, so I do have a joke that I just heard on TikTok about 30 minutes ago. Oh, okay. So, guy comes home from work, and he walks in the door, his wife's standing there with all her suitcases packed. And he's like, where are you going? She said, I'm going to Vegas. He said, for what? She goes, well, I found out that you can get $400 for a BJ for giving a BJ in Vegas. And the husband looked at her and went, 
really? And she said, yeah, I'm going to go make me some money. And he said, wait a minute. Runs upstairs, comes back down with all his bags packed. And she says, where do you think you're going? He goes, I'm going to Vegas. I want to see how you live on $800 a year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Wow. That was rough. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Okay. There you go. There you go. That uh, exactly right. Oh my god, that's messed up. <laughs> anyway, yes, folks, we've been watching a little too much TikTok, probably. Yeah, so, we have. You know, no, it's it's it's. I won't have a lot of time. I'm starting tomorrow, so you know. You are starting tomorrow. As far as I know, I, I one final email just to verify. So, wow, that's awesome. Get it going. I know. I mean, you said you said a little bit about today being boring, so it'd probably be good to get you, you know, get back into the game. Yeah, I mean, it, today is just my own fault. I honestly was taking a break from treadmill, taking a break from the, just letting my muscles heal. So, you know, it's a little just kind of, and I could tinker with a lot of other stuff. I mean, I have plenty of stuff to read and I have stuff to study, but it just one of those days where you're just not motivated. Yeah. I yeah. got you. So we have those. Yeah, we do. But you know what's really what's really awesome, and I wanted to say this in the last podcast we talked about, but what's really awesome is how long did it take for you to find a job? Two weeks. Three weeks tops, yeah. Three three weeks tops and you're working. Yeah. At fifty years old. At fifty years old, yes. That's in in a good job at that. Yeah. See, that's the thing that might scare people in this world is, you know, I was all, I'm always worried about that, man, because I'm pushing on the back door 60. I don't want to be going to look for a new job at my age. No, I don't disagree with you. But you being able to do this now in such a short period of time and getting back on, you know, getting things going, getting life going, getting motivated, getting positive things going in three weeks at our age is, is motivating. Oh, well, thanks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. You got to be proud of the fact that what you did was very scary at 50 years old. But in this day and age, nobody gives a damn. You know, if something like this would have happened in the 60s, maybe 70s, maybe even in the 80s. Right. It, you know, oh, no, we're not going to hire somebody that's 50 years old. You know, hell, you're, you know, you're dead. Nowadays, people work till they're 90. I know. We had one guy that just retired. I saw him day before yesterday walking out the door. He was, I can't remember if he's 82, 83, or 87, 88. You're talking about Roger. No, Bob Albright. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He And he, fa he was married for so many years, and they had a kid. And once the kid turned 21, they decided that, you know, she, she had had enough. She wanted to go on her own. So they split up, and literally two weeks after that, his old high school girlfriend hit him up on Facebook. Nice. 70 years ago. Oh, wow. He met her two days later, spent three days with her, came back, and put in his retirement. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now he's going, and he's worth millions, yeah. this guy. Yeah. He really did well financially. So. He's him. just gonna. He, now he's gonna enjoy life with this this new love of his. And yeah, I've never seen a guy smile so much. Good for him. I mean, he was walking out. I said, "Did you just do your exit interview, you shit bird?" You know, because I was giving him a hard time. Yeah, and uh, he had a smile on his face the whole time. The whole time, I said, "Enjoy your life with your newfound love." And he goes, "I'm absolutely gonna do that." And smiled as he's walked away, 80-something years old. Yeah. Awesome to see that. Yeah. Good for him. I hope I'm smiling at 80-something years old. I know. That's fair. <laughs> <clears throat> so maybe we take a couple more vacations, you know. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. I could do some vacation time. So now that's part of the reason that's our episode for today. We're actually going to be talking. Uh, so it's spring break. For like 
my kids in school and so it's spring break and there are a lot of people out for spring break and of course this is the big you know people like to get away and vacation during spring break yep so we figured we'd do a little bit of a spring break slash vacation you know we're not going to just limit it to to spring break but you know we figured we'd do a little a uh, couple of stories from our past of different vacations we've done fun positive good times yes yes good times yes so um i'm going to go first if you don't mind absolutely so i'm going to tell you a uh, a spring break that i had to work and, you know, people are going to be like, uh, okay, how is that fun, good times? <laughs> how is that a vacation? I know. So, here's the funny part. I was probably 21. Okay? I was working. Uh, 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, 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 10 years ago. Yeah, that's it. Sure. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so you're hilarious. But no, I uh, I was doing uh, I was working at Six Flags Astrowell, right? Okay. Well, for spring spring break this year, uh, the year that I was working there, they had this KRBE uh, spring break in the park event, and what they yeah. did is they drained the lagoon, completely drained it black topped it and then they brought in spring break type events so they had um a snow ice type maker and you so you had one event where you could go a ski or tube down the ice they had uh, mountain uh a rock wall climbing you know they had multiple different events uh the sumo wrestling where the big oh, suit the big you, yeah big with the big awesome. suits yeah so yeah. You know, so that year, I, when you weren't working your shift at the normal part of the park, if they needed help, you could volunteer to work at the KRBE park. And the so, beauty, go ahead. Let me we'll just hesitate there for a minute to let people know KRBE is, is a big radio station here in Houston. Yeah, probably the number one radio station in Houston. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it was a huge deal. Huge deal. So I actually worked a couple of the little events, helping people put on skis, helping people do the little things. You know, we just had a lot of fun. But the, the really fun part is the fact that they did an after-hours party for employees, and they actually opened all the events up for employees. Wow. And so that employees and their families? No, no it was just, just employees. Just employees. Yeah. Okay. Cuz that would have taken too long to go home, get your family, bring them back up there. I mean, you know, the park closed at 10. So, right. you know, the after-hour party is essentially when the park is cleaned out, not necessarily when it's closed because it still takes 30, 45 minutes to get everybody out of the park. Right. You know, cuz you have to sweep. And so, but yeah, dude, that was one of the most enjoyable just craziest i remember doing rock wall climbing and you know i was afraid of heights but we used to have competitions on who could go up those rock walls the fastest wow and we were doing them in a minute flat we were going to the top of the rock walls nice yeah so it was insanely crazy that was as a young person that was my best my favorite all time spring break you know i made so many friends on that event i had so much fun so it's awesome yeah that's awesome i wish i'd have known about that i'd have gone and checked it out dude i was probably well was it in the summertime spring break spring break duh yeah i was probably in germany you remember what year it was 21 that was probably in 90 it was either 91 or 92 well, I was in Orlando. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure they had some fun events when you were in Orlando, but you were wor wor water skiing. Yeah, I was working for SeaWorld, you know, so we had, 
I, how come I can't ever remember the name of that park? You just said it. We were talking about it right before we got on here. Universal Studios. Thank you. The Universal Studios had just opened up shortly after I started working at SeaWorld. And, of course, it's right down the street from Disney. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, spring break was always, we always worked spring break, but it was more fun because it was so many people down there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was really fun to do the ski shows and stuff like that. And, of course, we would meet people, young ladies. And, you know, we they would get us into Disney. I've, I've, I've had a couple times where they said, take tomorrow off and let's go hang out at Disney. And we, we did, you know, yeah. and they had a suite in the hotel right there, you know, right. like the temporary hotel and that kind of stuff. And, oh, yeah. Nice. So I kind of did the same thing. I was working, but still doing spring break with the people that came in, you know, the, the young ladies of the. Other other states. Yeah. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, like, come on, dude. H how could they turn down the water skier? I mean, you were tan and buff and, you know. Just saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's and the way it used to be. Their parents were at home, too. So, you know, right. they weren't at the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No dad bods there. <laughs> Smooth, <laughs> sl stomachs flat, you know. Yeah, whatever. You can see your feet when you look down. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, Good I old could, days. I can, I can see my feet if I lean over a little bit. <laughs> if I lean down and sit up. <laughs> there you go. Oh, my God. That's funny. Hold a mirror out. <laughs> Belly's aren't that bad. But yeah. uh, I know. <laughs> so... Go ahead. So, speak about that. It reminded me. When you said it was one of the best times, one of the best times I ever had, and it was a it was a purpose for spring break, but the snow in Colorado is pretty much gone by that time. Okay, and I wanted to go snow skiing, so we rented a I don't even know if you call it a cabin. It was huge. It slept sixteen people. Oh yeah, big. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, like a the lodge entire, cabin type thing. Yeah, yeah. lodge. Yeah, yeah. It, the entire family went. Yeah. And this lodge was literally you walk on the back patio, <clears throat> put your skis on, and ski right down to the lift. Oh. In Durango, Colorado. Nice. And I don't we were there for ten days. And I don't I don't even remember a time when there was an argument or a disagreement really? or a discussion. It, the entire family was in the best mood the entire time. You know, and we were still young kids. Yeah. Right? So, but you it, remember that. I remember every bit of it. <clears throat> Good for you. Eat every day, you know, and then at night they cooked on the grill outside and we ate like kings. And then when it was 10 o'clock, kids had to go upstairs because the adults, it was time for the adults to have their adult time. Yeah. You know. So the beverages came out, and they'd sit down and play cards or, you know, whatever they were doing. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was that was the best 10 days. And we drove there. Wow. Yeah, we drove from here to Durango, what, 18-hour drive? Okay. And snowing, sleeting, and all that going there. I think it was late February, early March. Okay. You know, so it wasn't actually spring break, but it was close enough yeah. to do that. So, yeah, man. I'll never forget that time. That was awesome. Yeah. Sorry, I'm yawning, folks. <laughs> Jay's been out. He's, he's not telling the truth. He's been out partying and hitting the bars since he ain't been working. Whatever. Trying to find all these ladies to buy him drinks. <laughs> Whatever. He said he doesn't drink, but now he's a closet drinker. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Started doing lots of drugs. No, I'm just kidding. Whatever. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> The only drugs I'm doing is, is Advil or, or, you know, Motrin or whatever. So, right. Anyway, <laughs> you're pretty funny. Yeah, no. I have to get that, back in the real world now. Yeah, so that that's actually funny, though. But that's really, that's kind of a cool situation. Because to, to go on vacation and not have any fighting, any sibling rivalries, any anything like that. Everybody just was having the great time. That's that's it, insane. Two day drive there, two day drive back in ten days of all of us. And there were sixteen of us <sighs> in that that you know in that cabin. Nice. 
That yeah, that was that was a good memory. I mean, we've done some New Braunfels spring break. Went to New Braunfels. Um, for those of you who don't know, New Braunfels, there's lots of rivers through there. So you get on an inner tube and you float down the river. Yeah, Guadalupe is the big one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the the place that my mother had rented, it was a house, a five bedroom house. Right. So all the kids, we were all grown at that point. We actually had kids, you know, young ones. Yeah. I think Andrew was probably three. Yeah. You know, he's my youngest one. So the really cool part about this house is you walk out the back door, <clears throat> walk to the end of the yard, jump in the river, float down the river. And then what we would do is we would, like Sean and I would get up in the morning and we would take the vehicle that held the most people. Yes. Down to a spot down the river. Right. And park it. And I would follow him and then we'd come back and then we'd all jump in the river and float down. And then this place ended up, and it's like a, a food place, you know, serves alcohol and stuff like that. Like, I don't know, just, it's just a restaurant right there on the river outside. Right. So what we would do is, you know, we'd rock, paper, scissors on who the unlucky was, one that was going to do the driving back and forth because we had to make three trips. But what we did was we one person, the first person that lost had to drive on the rock, paper, scissors for the adults. Second person that lost had to take care of the kids. Oh, okay. So the first lo- car load were two adults and the rest kids. Of course, this is back in the day when you could kind of sneak and not have to put them in a car seat. That yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. Just load them all up in the back of the truck, which we did one time, but we weren't very comfortable with that. It wasn't that far, maybe a mile and a half. Yeah, yeah. Drive them back, drop that adult off with the kids so they had to you know yeah they had to handle the kids while the adults are sitting at the bar drinking and you know nibbling on some snacks or whatever exactly yeah that was awesome that was really good time no that is cool dude that really is so i i it's been a long time since i've been over there so and they've actually got some if you've ever if you're ever interested i think they've got some different places where you can park and float down and they'll shuttle you back they do have several of those because we did one. Okay. Where you go and you sign up and you pay your money and all that stuff, and they have their inner tubes loaded on this big bus. They put you in this big bus, and they drive two or three miles up the river, and they, they put you out wherever you want to go. I mean, there's longer runs. Yeah, it's like, like four to eight hour hours. Run. Yeah. And, and then there's like eight-hour runs. So you pay for all that money at this restaurant right there on the river, and then they bus you up there. And then you float down, and when you get to the restaurant, you just hop out, turn the inner tubes in, go have a drink or go eat something and get in the car and go home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And some people will bring their own, what they call ice chest inner tube. Yes. And that way they can float their ice chest down with them. Yeah. So. And our ice chests had beer, wine, and liquor and sodas. Yep. And juice boxes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Got to have the kids. Had to have the juice boxes. Exactly. <laughs> you are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> they have one place in New Braunfels that you can park, and it's called the Horseshoe. Yes. And it's about a 45-minute run. You can literally get in the river and float for 45 minutes, get out of the river, walk about 500 yards, get back in the river, and float the Horseshoe again. And you you put you right back where you started. You're right. Yeah, and you can literally get back in your vehicle. You don't have to worry about any shuttles. You don't have to. Yeah, I know. Right. Yeah. You just have to buy your own inner tubes because they don't have inner tubes at that one. Yeah, exactly. But they didn't back in the day. You know, this is 30 years ago. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, no, it's that's that's really a cool story, too. I, I always like Lee Bronzeville. Yeah. So, I, I'll tell you another spring break story. So, this was... Spring break 2013. Okay. Okay. So when we were in Indiana, Indiana plans for snow days. All right. Okay. So they give they give the schools two weeks for spring break. Because if they have to do snow days, then essentially you just burn up part of that second week. So right, because you, you have to go so many days a year. So. Exactly. So they would tell you, you know, at the beginning of spring break, it's like, okay, we've had this many snow days. 
the guys are the, the kids are required to be back on this day, you know. You know, whether it's Wednesday or whatever, you know, but the whole point is is they have to be back at a certain time. Well, they got lucky that year and they didn't have any snow days. Nice. I think they had one, but they didn't have to burn. One's no big deal. So, right. you know, so they didn't have to burn. So they had two weeks off for spring break. Nice. Yeah. So that was the last time I got an intemp tax return. <laughs> I think if I remember correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, maybe a, maybe it was 2014 I got one, but you know, yeah. anyway, I just remember because I well because I had gotten the bonus from Enterprise, and I got an income tax return, and I think I paid seven grand for a vacation. Wow, we had never, I and mean, we had been on one vacation before, but it wasn't like a long vacation, so we had never been to Disney. So I literally bought, you know, a resort. We went and stayed at one of the Disney resorts. So here, here's kind of how we, and I'll, I'll kind of lay it out to you really quickly, and then, then you, you know, we'll go back and describe more of it. But essentially, we left on Saturday. We drove like 10 hours on Saturday. Right. Okay. From Indiana all the way to south of Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. To this little college town. It was essentially, I don't even remember what, I, if I looked it up on a map, I could find it, but it was a really nice little town. So, got a hotel, unloaded the truck, you know, and right. it, I had a, what is it, a lid on the truck. Right. Uh, so, I could lock it. So, basic necessity stuff. We left in there and just locked the lid. But, you know, anything that we needed for, like, a change of clothes or, you know, a right. toothbrush yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, but anyway, we, we, you know, went, grabbed some food, went back to the hotel. You know, it was actually very comfortable because we stopped at a decent time. I say it was 10 hours, but, I mean, we left at, like, 7 a.m. that morning. So, you got to figure, you know, it was probably... After we stopped for lunches, uh, stopped for lunch and all the bathroom breaks, we probably got in like 6.30. It wasn't right. horrible bad, you know? I mean, right. so we right. were on the road 11 and a half, but 10 hours of driving. Yeah. It, it wasn't horribly bad. Got in, ate dinner, got in bed, slept, you know, just kind of, the kids were wound up. There, went, there was no way they were going to be. Sitting in a car for 10 hours. Well, yeah, yeah exactly. But, you know, we're going to be at Disney the next day. So, you know, so, but yeah, so we, you know, it was going to be, I thought it was going to be like, you know, four and a half, maybe five hours the next day. It didn't even take us that long. Um, we got up the next morning, got in the truck. It was beautiful outside. So we finished the drive. We get there at like 1230. I mean, it was really, we got there really early and you're not supposed to check in until three. Right. So I'm like, oh shit. So I talked, you know, and he said, well, if you can, if you can give us an hour, we'll have it ready. And I'm like, okay. So you know, about an hour later, I could check in, and it was no big deal. We just kind of sat around and tinkered around stuff, drove around. Let's say there's way too many things to do in Orlando that you could, you know. Well, once we, once we unloaded the truck, the first thing we did is is because I got a cabin at Fort Wilderness. Oh wow. Very cool. Yeah. So, and it's one of the resorts. So it has all the buses and all the stuff to get to all the parks, you know, so that was kind of cool. But the beauty of it is it was, it had a full kitchen, living room, you know, enough room for six people. So right. we literally drove down to the nearest Walmart and we picked up stuff for breakfast, drinks, and just normal, you know, everyday stuff. And if we wanted to grill hot dogs one day. So we bought charcoal and lighter and, you know, hot dogs and buns and stuff like that. And so, yeah, dude. So we did that, went to eat, came back to the room, got settled in. And so we went to Magic Kingdom on Monday. We went to, what was it? Magic Kingdom, Epcot. <laughs> no, yeah, Magic Kingdom, Epcot. Ep 
Yeah. And, egg, and then. And then. Animal uh, Kingdom and the other Hollywood one? Studios and then Animal Kingdom. Okay. Yeah. And dude, yeah, we were like going. And I mean, it was just like nonstop. I mean, just every morning getting up, trying to get, you know, every night, you know, coming in exhausted. I mean, we were just, it was insanely crazy. So, you know, we did all four parks in four days. I mean, it was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, we were running ragged. Um, none of us were ready for that. We literally, and, and I'll go into more detail in a minute, but Friday morning we got up because I'd only paid for five nights. So we did four days in the park and five nights. We got up Friday morning and we took our sweet time because we were all wore out let's just be honest right. yeah um left there at 11 o'clock and we drove to daytona because i had booked a condo for the weekend in daytona oh man uh yeah on the beach on the boardwalk you know and it was a really nice condo full kitchen full everything just like the the cabin so you know we could literally it was literally on the beach kind of, but they had a, a big pool, a kiddie pool and a lazy river, all part of this resort, you know? So yeah, dude, we had such, so we stayed there till Monday morning. That was our, you know, that was our vacation. That was our crazy. I mean, you speak, you think about it, you know, the amount of things that you do back and forth, you know, we went to all these restaurants, you know, you, you got all these things you want to see at Disney. Oh my goodness, we were wore out. I, I'll be honest with you, when we got home on Tuesday, yeah, it was everything just to sit down and be like, <laughs> all of you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because Daytona was supposed to be relaxing, but you're still kind of, you know, yeah, the laser river's nice, but, you know, I still well, got you're kids. Still amped up, you're in the sun all day. <laughs> yeah. You're, you know, in yeah. the laser river. Yeah. Yeah. It'll take so, a lot out of you, especially after five days of that. Yeah. Yeah. Disney and yeah. Yeah. And Daytona was nice. We checked in on Friday and then we left on Monday. That was probably the craziest vacation that, you know, me and the kids um, ever did. It was just, you know, um, back when I was still married because it was just, you know, having the Disney and then immediately going to Daytona and just this kind of whirlwind tour of, of going everywhere, you know, and I drove everywhere. I mean, so we didn't fly anywhere. So when we left Daytona, we had to drive back up to Indiana. Yeah. So the funniest thing, oh, my God, the funniest thing about that trip, and you'll laugh. So we leave Daytona, and, of course, shorts, T-shirt, everything's right. packed in the, 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 okay? We drive. To I forgot what part of Tennessee, but we drive probably t a good 10, 11 hours again. Okay. Right. And we stop at a hotel and get out of the car, and it's 31 degrees outside. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in Don't get out. Stay in the truck. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm in shorts and a t shirt <laughs> trying to get luggage out. So people could get warm clothes on. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was just like, oh, <laughs> this is murder. Yeah, we go from literally 75 degrees, beautiful weather, to 31 degrees. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is cold. Holy crap. Yeah. Park right next to the room. All right, let me go open the door, and you guys run from the truck into the... Uh, I think we... Heat up. Yeah, I think we stayed at a Hampton. So it was just, you know, one of those, you, you enter the front door and that's it. You know, it's one oh, door. Okay, so you were, it wasn't like where you pull up to the door. No, no, know. no, 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 no. You, yeah, yeah. So it was still, but it was pretty funny. Oh my gosh, that was like the craziest uh, vacation. I will say though, um, we loved, and still to this day, my favorite is still Hollywood Studios. And Animal Kingdom, right? Animal Kingdom is probably my number one. Uh, we had that. That was a wonderful time. The kids had so much fun. Now I will say Daytona was great, but Daytona because we went during spring break. About almost every day at two o'clock on the dot, it rained. 
So of course, <laughs> that's we're Florida. Sitting, yeah, I know. I mean, so we're we're sitting there like, uh, okay, everybody, running out, run back in the room, run back in the room. Okay, thirty minutes later. Oh, it's it's done. We can we can we can go back out and play in the water. Um, yeah, no, yeah, just stay in it. It's raining. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's crazy, but yeah, no, man, that was one crazy vacation. I did. We did pick up a lot of souvenirs, though. I tried. You're gonna laugh at me. That's where I tried to skimboard. <laughs> <laughs> You know, all the years of skiing and, and the agility that I had in my twenties, I never could I I could do it, but it didn't. Yeah. It it's tough. Oh, dude, let me tell you, I bet it enough to where I was like, Okay, yeah, I'm not getting it. I'm good. I think I'm good. I think we're gonna have <laughs> no. Scratch it off the bucket list. <laughs> we're done with that. Yeah, I, I've tried. <laughs> exactly. I still have my skimboard though. It's hanging up oh, in my wow. living room. So you know, if anything, it's a reminder. Yeah, I've tried it, and my butt hurt a lot. Don't try it again. And especially <laughs> at my age, I probably wouldn't hurt just my butt. You're right. <laughs> just, that pain would go all the way up into your ears. <laughs> exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, And um, then three weeks of recovery. Walking like you're 90. M- maybe three weeks. Yeah, maybe longer, depending on how bad. I know. So true. So, so true. But yeah, that was that was pretty funny. I wanted to try surfing so bad, but I honestly, I chickened out because, oh my God, it's spring break. And I went out in that water. Oh, it was murder. Nice. What? Yeah, dude. Well, on the, on the Daytona side, on the, uh, on the Atlantic side. Right. Okay. Not on the Gulf side, but on the Atlantic side, the water is so much colder. Really? Yeah. Well, especially that time of year. Oh, yeah. Well, you know. Yeah. So, dude, that water, because I mean, you know, the currents are all coming in from the north and just, oh my gosh. I would have thought there would have been a lot of people out there if there was some surf. There. There was a couple there there was a couple of people I, I think that tried to surf. The funniest thing was is there was actually a truck out there where they were giving lessons for surfing. Oh cool. But nobody was signing up. <laughs> it was too cold. <laughs> it was too cold. I ain't gonna lie, dude. We wow. we we went out and it's like yeah, this water's too cold. Let's go back up in the heated pool. <laughs> I was gonna say was the pool heated the pool, and the lazy, and the lazy all river all was heated. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so it was funny as hell. It was just like, yeah. But, you know, the coolest part, I think, is the sharks we saw. Oh, nice. Yeah. Scary, but nice. I actually had a camera, and I'm sitting there in the balcony, and I'm seeing shark fins. And so I had a t- uh, one of those telescopic lenses, and I actually zoomed in and could take pictures of their fins coming in and out of the water. And so it was really cool. So, and it didn't look like dolphins, people. It it actually looked like shark fins. I was fixing to say, yeah, I know it's dolphins because you know they they you know they're playful. Yes, they are playful, but this looked very much like shark fins. So I had really good, and I got some really good sunrise photos. I had to adjust the camera lens a little bit just to get them because you know otherwise it blinds out the camera. Yeah, right. dude, I got some really good photos. So that was that was that was my spring break. But now you've been to Disney, but a different time. Yeah, we working in a theme park my whole life. All those years of water skiing. The one thing that is you know a pet peeve of mine is crowds. You know, I lived my life waiting in line for lunch every day waiting in line to get in the parking lot, waiting in line to get out of the parking lot, you know, those kinds of things, walking, you know, a mile to get to your car after work kind of stuff, you right. know, yeah. through the crowds and crowds and crowds of people. So I actually called around and I kind of knew because working in a theme park for so many years, I kind of knew when was the slowest time of the year to go to Disney. Yeah. I actually called Disney and thought what they said, and they they gave me the political answer. Well, there's never a bad time to go and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, 
I want to know when your lowest attendance. attendance numbers are, and that's when I want to go. So just to give you an example, when I was working at SeaWorld in Florida one year, I worked Christmas Day. Yeah. Christmas Day in Orlando, Florida, 22 degrees. And it was still busy and as hell. No. Oh. No, it wasn't. However, here's the deal. Our stadium would hold 5,500 people. Okay. Okay. So, and there, I don't think there was a day go by that we would do four and five, six, eight, almost 10 shows a day, and the stadium would be jam-packed with people the whole time during the summer. Right. 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 Christmas Day, I can't even remember what year this was, but it was early 90s. Um, we all had to draw for the acts in the show. And when you get to be a water skier and a ski show, you get good enough to where you're not going to get wet. And what I mean by that, you're going to get your ankles wet or your knees wet, and maybe, you know, your your shorts might get a little wet at the bottom, but you're usually good enough to be able to do certain acts or most of the acts without getting wet. Right. Now, the first act of the day in this particular show was the barefoot act. You're going to get wet from head to toe. Okay. I mean, so. Right. Now, it's 22 degrees outside. I drew the I drew the barefoot opening barefoot act. Oh, ouch. the only good side about that was I did the barefoot run at the beginning of the show. Now the shows are forty five minutes long, and so as soon as I did that act, I'd run in and got in the shower, and the only thing I had to do after that was pyramid, which was the last thing of the show. Right. Right. So I went in and got warm, put clothes on, went and helped everybody else do their acts, held towels for the girls that had to be in bikinis. When it was cold, so that they, as soon as they landed, they were covered up, that kind of thing. All right. We had to do the show. There were six people in the audience. Are you serious? No kidding. Oh my God. There were six people, and they wouldn't, we had 47 tickets, free passes to get into SeaWorld that we wanted to give them, and the management wouldn't let us do it. Oh. Because you're doing a ski show. We did one ski show for that entire day because it was so cold, but we did it. You tried to give those six people, here, here's tickets if you don't here's go. Here's 47 free passes to get into SeaWorld, and they're, they, they're open-ended. Yeah. You could come five years from now. Right. But as long as you don't make us do this show, if you'll walk away right now, here's 47 tickets. You know those people would have done it. <laughs> yes. They just split them up amongst themselves and walked away. Management would, Management wouldn't let us do it. Oh, my gosh. So we ended up having to do a ski show. Oh. So that being said, I wanted to go when they were only saying, you know, I wanted to be the six people in the crowd, but I didn't want it to be cold either. Yes. So fair enough. That was Christmas Day. I didn't want to go during Christmas when it was cold. I wanted to go when it was. So I talked, you know, thinking about it, talking to a bunch of friends on Facebook and stuff like that. The week after Labor Day is probably the slowest time of the year for Orlando, Florida. Now, nope. this was, again, this is, you know, 20 years ago. Right. So, I don't know what the stats are I now. Sti- I would still think September is still the slowest. Week after Labor Day, because everybody's going back to school. Yep. Right? Right after Labor Day, everybody's back in school. Now, everybody's back in school in August, but after Labor Day is when everybody's digging in and, you know. Well, but, I mean, sports are happening. So, kids yeah. who have, are involved in sports and extracurriculars, they all have to be there. Football, band, all that stuff's been going on for a month or so already. Right, yeah, a couple of weeks, a month, yes, exactly. So we did. We jumped in the car, and we drove down there after the Labor Day weekend. Okay. Like, And got there on that Sunday, Labor Day's Monday, and then everybody goes home on Labor Day or whatever. And we, you know, I had friends, you know, kids were young. Andrew wasn't even born yet. We just took the three older boys, Josh, Jake, and Nick. Right. And Christy and I, so we get down there, and we got the hotel room, and we went and called my buddy that worked at Disney, and he met us at the gate and walked us in. So we got free passes to go in, and they gave us a band so that um, we could leave one park and go into another for the day. Right. So we didn't have to pay the hundred and something dollars for a ticket or anything like that. So, and I got a really expensive hotel because I know Orlando like the back of my hand. Right. Right. Cause you live there. Yeah. So we did that, 
you know, we were there for, we did all three Disney parks. We did, God, what's the name of the damn park again? Magic Kingdom? I, no, no, the other one. Yeah, Universal Disney, Studios. Uh, Universal Studios. We went there for a day. And then, of course, I had friends that gave me passes to go to SeaWorld for the day. Right. So we did all, all the four or five parks back then. And, yeah, we were exhausted. Yeah, I mean, you, you're even, running. even Nikki, who was Mr. Ener Energizer Bunny, by 9 o'clock, that kid was snoring. Yeah. I mean, out cold. And you were like, thank God, I can go to sleep, too. <laughs> or I have a drink or something. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, you know, me, I wanted to get frisky with the wifey poo, and she's like, uh, I don't think so, young man. You go lay over there on the floor. Oh, my gosh. That's, <laughs> That's funny. Sleep. So much for that idea. Well, yeah. you know. But I got it. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, really, but even though I had been there and lived there for however many years, and then, you know, came back in the real world, finished my college, got a degree, started working, got married, had kids, and then went back. It was fun to see some of the people that I haven't seen and only seen on Facebook. So that was enjoyable. One of my buddies let us take his boat out. He's got a ski boat. We we did a little tubing and you know, the kids got to ski a little bit and that's a lot of fun. Yeah, it was it was it was, that was good. Orlando's a great place to go because you don't just have Universal Studios. I remembered it this time. SeaWorld and Disney. You've got there's so many things to do. Ripley's believe it or not. Yeah, you know you, they've got that going on. And there's probably a hundred other things you can do now in Orlando. There's water parks like crazy down there now, and it's grown up. I went down a few, three or four months ago, and I didn't even recognize where I was. I kept having to ask my buddy Joey because he was driving. I'm like, "Where the hell are we?" Yeah, he's like, "Oh, we're over here off of Orange Blossom Trail." Uh -huh. I'm like, "No, we're not." It was six lanes wide and, you know. No, yeah, exactly. And, new and yeah. So, so Orlando's grown up so much, but it's so fun. The next time I go, I want to take the kids and do Universal. We haven't done Universal yet. I want to do the Harry Potter, Diagon Alley, um, yeah. and some of that other stuff. That's what I really want to do. And then, of, of course, we're going to want to go back to Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom's our favorite. Can't beat it. Yeah. I loved it back when Animal Kingdom had a bug's life was the big deal, and they had the big tree. The tree's still there. It's still there of the bug's life. That yeah. had just opened up prior to us going. Right. So the last time we went, they had just opened the Pandora section. Oh, wow. That's right. I heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and for those of you who don't know what Pandora is... It's the planet from the Avatar movie, the Blue People. It's the Blue People. The Blue People. Yeah. So that was insane. That's a great area. Um, matter of fact, a friend of mine's down there right now at Animal Kingdom. So nice. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. See, uh, Universal Studios was Harry Potter wasn't a thing nope. when I went. No, nope. it was all Jurassic Park. Yes. Yes, and well, I want to see that too. Yeah, yeah. So there's still a lot of really cool things, but yeah, I, I want to. You know, there's quite a few different sections of that that I'd like to see. So, but the I want to do that. I want to play golf at one of the golf courses at Disney. Nice. They and got lots of nice courses there. They do, and then I want to go over to Destin. Now, now that's so funny. I was just thinking of that. That was the next best vacation I'd ever been on. Really? Yes. Okay. But it was in the summertime. Okay. We went to Destin and rented, uh, my mother rented a house, and it was a whole family staying in the house, and there were a few disagreements and discussions on what we were going to do, but most of the part was just hanging out in the clear water and the white sandy beaches. Oh, it was 4th of July. Oh, Okay. Destin, Florida is a great place to go for 4th of July, and this is why. On the beach, if you can stay right there on the beach, hundreds, maybe even thousands of people all drive their vehicles down onto the sand, and they're allowed to do this, and they set off their own fireworks. Okay. Thousands of people. Yeah. So fireworks are going off for three and four hours. Because people are buying thousands of dollars worth, loading their truck up, 
and they're firing them right there on the beach. Right. It's probably the only place they're allowed to. Yeah. But here is the most fantastic. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Okay. So you got 4th of July fireworks, thousands of people drinking and partying up all night long. Fireworks are going off all night long. The next morning, everybody is up and the entire town is out there cleaning up all the firework debris. Really? Yes. They had taco carts with for free tacos for breakfast. They had, you know, drink carts that were out there, trucks pulling up, feeding people for free that were cleaning up the debris from the night before's party. Good for you. Good for them. I that mean. I mean, you know, that was badass. They Most respect people, their beach. Yes. Absolutely. And even the people that got smashingly drunk, all those people got up, was struggling to pick up the debris, but still doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Everybody and everybody was as nice and no fights and you know. Right. Yeah, Destin, Florida is a good place to go if you want to do something like that. Yeah. And you know, I probably will do that separate from whenever I do um, Universal Studios, but I, that's another place I want to check out is Destin, See, Florida. It's your speedo, Jay. Get you some sun. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know about a speedo here. Yeah. Anybody who knows me, yeah, that's not a pretty visual. Let's just say there's going to be a bunch of women out there that might go, hey, wait a minute. Dad bod, whatever. Look at that. Whatever. <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm good. So I think I could pour some honey on that biscuit. <laughs> anyway. Hey, that's something we didn't say in the, in the, Episode we were talking about what, what was euphemisms, the euphemisms. Yeah, some honey on that biscuit. <laughs> oh my gosh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, you're so modest. I you're know. So, so, modest. so yeah, and Destin's awesome. Disney's awesome. Snow skiing is awesome. Yeah, if I could get over my heights, that would be a lot of fun. What going up to the top of a mountain and skiing down it? Uh, yeah. There's just no just way. Just stay off the black stuff. Stay off the black diamond Dude, stuff. Dude, I can't even look down without having an anxiety attack. No, no. You know, I had a lot of trouble. I remember, just to give you a little tidbit about my heights problem, when we drove from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia, Mr. Brent had to uh, drive part of the way because we had to actually drive through the mountains. And you had to go through tunnels and down and through a tunnel and down and through a tunnel and make a curve. And right off the edge of the curve is a cliff off the side of the mountain. Oh, dude, there was no way. I actually slept most of the time. I woke up and we're sitting there doing this 45 degree angle down in a tunnel. And I'm looking down and at the end of the tunnel is literally a turn. And I can't see where the turn goes, but I could tell... That if we don't make the turn, we're going off the cliff. Right. And, and I'm like, my anxiety's kicking in. So I'm like, nope, that's it. I'm going back to sleep. I literally close my eyes and I'm like praying at that point. Because, I mean, I know Brent's not going to drive us off the cliff, but I'm literally, I'm freaking out at this point. I ain't going to lie. So, so did this manifest itself over time? Or yes. you've always, see, I think there's something about that. Because, but, but it's incidents, little things that happen that triggered that. That's a that's an interesting, interesting. I want to get into that. Different episode. Got, yeah, but just quickly, one of my friends absolutely has a fear of high bridges. Yeah, and once he told me about it, I'm like, wow, I never really thought about it. And the next time I went over a high bridge, I was freaking out. Why? <laughs> you got me. All of a sudden now, now when I had my shoulder surgery, I would drive over this one bridge and I kept telling my buddy, <laughs> it's 300 <coughs> feet off the ground. Right. He's like, there's no way. There's no way. I said, okay. So I got my cell phone and I started videoing going over that bridge and I sent it to him. And he's like, holy shit, that's lower than, that's more than 300 feet. Right. And this is right. This is right here in Houston. I know. And so now, I, 
I still go over the bridge, but my heart drops. My buddy will drive four hours out of his way to avoid a high bridge. Okay, so now there is one bridge. Okay, there's actually two bridges that I have trouble with. Okay? Okay. Um, and one of them they're t- tearing down and replacing. Or actually, both of them they're tearing down and replacing. Sorry. One of them is on I-10 in Lake Charles. Okay. That's, I know exactly what you're talking about. That bridge is like, I mean, it was old as hell, small as hell, cramped as hell. And it was only two lanes. And it was only That's two lanes. Problem. Yeah, and I was always in the left lane because there was no way. I couldn't be in the right lane. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, oh, yeah, that bridge bothered me. 60 feet. Yeah. 280 feet, something like that. Yeah, and it yeah. went it went up too fast and came down too fast. And it just, yeah, if you had a trucker Steep in front of you over. or behind you, yeah, it was just a nerve-wracking. Yeah, I hated that bridge. The, I, I, drive, I would drive around it now because it's freaking me out. Yeah, so the bridge, so they put in the bypass with the new bridge that goes over, and the new bridge is a lot nicer. So I do the bypass now. But see, we have a bridge here that's 230 feet off the water, but it's it's 12 lanes wide. So six going north, six going south, or whatever. You're talking about the 610 one. No, this is the uh, Fred Hartman Bridge right there, 146. I didn't think it was five or six on each side, is it? Yes. Okay. It's five or six on each side. See, that one doesn't bother me. Because it's so wide, you don't get that feeling of being that high off the ground. And it's a suspension bridge, too. Yeah, yeah. The, so, the, yeah. the other one I hate is the Beltway 8 going over the ship channel. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the two lanes on each side. Yep. Yeah, I have to be in the left lane. I don't know how we got that. I'm sorry. I got us on a rant about bridges. So in, in yeah, we, we were, yeah, yeah, so... You can blame Nick on that one. So we were supposed well, to be talking about vacation. Every vacation I've been on, I've never had height anxiety. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Let's go back to that. I can get on the top of a mountain. I can drive through the mountains. Okay. It's just the fact of the straight drop off. Now, I ride my motorcycle in Bandera. Yeah. And there's a highway, and I can't remember that they. There's a, a triangular three highways that you run, they call the Three Sisters. Yeah. It's one of the top five best rides for a motorcycle ride in North America. Okay. It's 335, the highway is 335, 336, and 337. 337 is one of these very almost straight up and down, 20-mile-an-hour turns, 1,000-foot drop-off right next to the road, and it's barely two lanes wide. Okay. So. One lane going one way, one lane going the other. Right. Doesn't bother me. I could be on the edge going around a corner at 20 miles an hour looking 1,000 feet down, literally 10 feet from me. It doesn't bother me. Good for you. But get me on a bridge. <laughs> yeah. I start start panicking. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because the ground's permanent. The bridge is not. That, that is true. See, maybe that's what it is. When I'm going through the mountains, it's no big deal because I'm on the ground. It's just a lot lower, 10 feet away. Yeah. Well, but you also have control. So you are comfortable yeah. with the fact that you're driving. You know, yeah. okay, if something happens, I'm just going to lay this down. If the bike right. goes over the rail, the bike goes over the rail, I'm just going to hang onto the rail and let the bike go. going to give me some road rash on the old boote. Yeah, exactly. But at least you're alive. Yeah, if yeah. the bridge collapses, yeah, the, there ain't no. Yeah, and I've watched too many Transformer movies and stuff like that where bridges break really easy. Yeah, I mean, come on, we had the one in uh, the Twin Cities. <laughs> Remember the Twin oh, Cities? That's right. Yep. Yeah, and people. Yep. I mean, how many cars went over the edge because they just kept driving? They didn't realize, they didn't know, and they just kept you know car after car after car after car. That's just be the worst feeling ever. Yeah. I know. And there are plenty of people that died from that. So, I mean, that was just rough. So, yeah, bridges. Anyway. Oh, so Disney. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, back to Disney. Disney. No, I don't know. It, it, this it's funny. Disney, Disney, Disney World in Disneyland. So, Disney World is in California. No, Disney World is in Orlando. Disneyland but, is in California. 
Okay, I haven't I been to Disneyland yet. Neither have I. Yeah, but I heard there's a lot of really, if you go to Disneyland, it's really cool because you can always, there's a chance you can run into uh, stars or whatever. Right. You know, that's the other thing, you know. So they're, you know, anything that they do, their TV shows, if they do anything that's at Disneyland, you know, so that's where they do a lot of their stuff. Yeah. So, but no, it's <laughs> it's really cool. But yeah, vacations, yeah, sorry. Hey, you know, Scared of Heights is part of vacations too. <laughs> I, I I actually did drive over the spine of a mountain one time to go on a vacation, and I was a nervous wreck. So, did you have the kids with you? Yes. Oh, so you had to maintain some kind of you know sanity. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, sure. We'll we'll call it that. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You got to protect those kids, man. You got to hunker down. Oh no, I, I I was fine. If they'd just be quiet. Oh, right. You know, yeah. I'm I'm already having enough anxiety. I don't need kids like screaming and yelling and whatever while I'm sitting there like freaking out. Pee. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, dude. Yeah. I'm in the left lane in a four lane highway. You know, there's a median and yeah, it's a drop off off the spine. You know? Ooh. Yeah. So, and so that was actually Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Oh, beautiful city. Yeah, so we would... Beautiful. I lived there for two summers. Really? Oh, yes. Yeah, we stayed in Pigeon Forge, and we visited Gatlinburg. So, yeah, so that was... And so I had to... Because we came out of Indiana, and we, we drove down to... What is it? We drove to... Na, uh, not Nashville. We were in Kentucky, and we went to Knoxville. Um, there was this highway, I think it was 75 that we drove south on. And yeah, when you come out of, yeah, Kentucky, you, you literally have to drive over the spine of the mountain there before you get to Knoxville, Tennessee. But I loved Gatlinburg. I had a little chalet, little A-frame chalet that I lived in. And there was a ski show there, Tommy Bartlett Water Ski Show in Pigeon Forge. Okay. Yeah. Ski that for two years in Dollywood. Well, Dollywood, the first year I was there, Dollywood wasn't open yet. Oh, uh, okay. So the second time I was there, I was there in '84 and then again in '87. And okay. Dollywood, I think, was open in '87. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. so. I got to sit next to Dolly Parton in a boat. Nice. For during a parade. Nice. Yeah. She's a, she is as sweet as they say. She's as sweet as she can be. Okay. Yeah, she was really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, I love Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg. We did that, you know, I think two years before we went to Disney in 2011. Or, yeah, 2011. Yeah, I think that's right. So I'd love to take my motorcycle up there and do a little riding around that area. That would be a beautiful area to do it. On. Yes, I agree with you. The funny thing is, is so I actually flew my mother-in-law to Indiana. And she actually went to Gatlinburg with us. Oh, all of you in the same car? All of us, seven people in the same truck. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Drive it over the spine of a mountain. <laughs> I, I take it you like your mother-in-law. Oh, she was a nice lady, yes. Oh, there you go, see. Yeah, she treated me, she treated me well. Because, I mean, I took care of her daughter. So, you know, I mean, come on. When did I ever not take care of my business? So, you know, what's not to like? Come on, people. Just saying. You know. You know, mother-in-laws can be rough. Uh, yeah, not mine. Um, you know, even, I see, for three or four years after I got divorced, I'd still take the kids over there to see her sometimes. Well, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Not the kids' fault, you know. That no, was it's what not. Happened when, when I got my divorce, the kids wanted to see their grandfather on that side of the family, right? And she's like, "I don't like him. I don't like him." And I'm not going to get into the whole story of why she didn't like him, but I said, "Those kids are suffering. They want to see their grandfather." Okay, he's an asshole. That's not their fault. Yeah, I know. And she she allowed me to take them, you know. Right, right. Well, that's good. But okay, there you go. There's my vacations crazy. 
Yeah. So God, some of those places, man, I would love to go back to. I don't know so much about Disney now at my age. You know, the kids are grown. Andrew's going to turn 20 this year. He's my youngest. If you had grandkids to take, it'd be different. See, now that's a whole different ball game because I'd probably spend my, sell my back teeth. <laughs> you exactly. Know? There you go. That motorcycle would go up for sale to take them kids to Disney. And see, would, you know, that, see, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. And I'd regret it later, but it would have been worth it. No, you wouldn't. I'd want to take them the back. Memories. I'd take them in. The memories, though, that's the key point. Come on. Yeah. I'd want to take my, you know, the grandkids snow skiing. There you go. Good for you. Yeah. Go up into Utah or something like that. Yeah, there you go. So, well, folks, we're going to have to wrap it up. We've kind of, we've been going pretty good here. We hope you have some good vacation stories. We didn't dive into ours a lot, but, you know, it's always fun to reminisce about good times and good vacations and memories you develop. Yes. And just re- just remember, it isn't always the money you spend, but the memories you create. That's right. And and I think, you know, that's the big thing is, is, yeah, I said I spent how much money on the Disney, but, you know, it's about the memories we created. My kids had never been. That was like, I had never been. That was like the craziest thing in the world for us. So You don't regret spending that money now, do you? Never. Well, yeah. you know, I actually maybe even regret not spending more. Right. <laughs> you know, and I, I honestly sometimes so little. The, the We went to Disney again, and this time we did two days. You know, so we did Magic Kingdom and did Hollywood Studios. And then we did a day off to rest <laughs> and recuperate. Awesome. Good idea. And then we did Animal Kingdom and Epcot. Oh, nice. See? And so that was so much better. It was oh yeah, because you got that break. Yes, yes. Had so, to put the adults in a timeout. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, the only downside was Katie got a concussion on the Tuesday night. So, ouch. Yeah, but you know, they gave us a lot of free stuff. So yeah. every time we tell somebody you're going to Disney, okay, who's taking the hit? Yeah. <laughs> 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 who's All sl- right. Rock, paper, scissors, let's go down. Yeah, who's who's slipping in the water, getting a concussion, <laughs> getting you a bunch of free stuff. You know, no, I was kidding. Don't do it, <laughs> folks. It, it was legitimately, it was an accident. Um, but it was just funny because, you know, they really, they, they, they are very serious. They, they don't, they want you to have a great time. And, you know, they were very seriously concerned about Katie. You know, I think they were more concerned about being sued. But, oh, yeah, you know, but, but the whole thing is, is they go out of their way to make sure you're going to still enjoy your vacation. I got to give them credit for that. They did a phenomenal job to make well, sure. The people that are working there, they're, you know, they're, they are concerned. They are genuinely worried about your safety. They're people too. Yeah. 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 They're not worried about the lawsuits and stuff like that. Let that deal with the upper management stuff. They're worried about the people in general. That's I just know, I know. But no, we had resort general managers down in our room. Awesome. Yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, there there's a bit of care and there's a bit of it's a it's both. Let's just be honest. C, a bit of CYA. Yes. But but yeah, yeah so but you know, yeah, it, it was we made jokes about it later cuz you know, Katie was okay. You know, yeah, she did have a concussion, but she was okay. She did recover. No side effects that we know of. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to see her today, too. I know. I did. I did. So, but no, it's 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 always good. So, uh, anything you want? Any last minute uh, kind of last uh, bit of sharing you want to do on the... For you young ones out there, do it. It's worth it. Enjoy it. Enjoy your family. You never know how much time you're going to have with them. Yeah, that's a very good point. It, memories are priceless. Yes. You know, and I do, I will always have the memory of Andrew in that uh, Disney and, uh, and you know, we have those pictures. We can always go back to those. Yeah, so, it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, folks, it, that's it's a really great thing to share for those youngins. Is yes, if you it can is. if you can find a way to do it, 
it is it. worth it. Build the memories. So, love you, brother. Love you too. Um, I don't have anything else for the fans. Um, we hope you guys like our dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be sharing a few more. You, you may like them. You may not. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> Whatever. So, um, you know, from all of us at the J Talk crew, keep following, keep listening.